Okay, uh, yeah, I just, uh, Jim asked me to say a few words about uh, an alternate derivation of a Mach effect equation just from standard general relativity. And uh, you, you might have seen us here on the first night. Mark also took a stab at the same thing. And so we, I think, reconciled between Martin and I our understanding. Uh, and we understand what Jim did. And what Jim did is basically uh, legitimate, but more seat of the pants. Uh, so I think uh, we wanted to show explicitly that it is in general relativity. Um, so, okay, this board's cleaner. Uh, so I just wanted to summarize real quick what Jim did, what I did, what Martin did, and uh, not bother you with the algebra. I do have a write-up that I can get. I gave a few of you. Jim has it. Uh, you know, a few of you have it. So if you want to see the algebra, um, but. But basically, uh, with these Mach equations, we sort of write Newton's law, d squared phi equals 4 pi g rho. So that's Newton's law so far. And then uh, the Mach effect, uh, we get stuff like uh, d rho dt uh, squared. Uh, and then and I'll put a twiddle. I'm not sure on the sign d squared rho dt squared, and is that about it? Something like that. I might be miss missing c squareds to make the units work. So fundamentally, Jim uh, has come up with this observation that in general relativity, you get an effective source term to the standard gravitational field, and it doesn't depend on the gravitational constant. So the gravitational constant is a small number, so that's why we need a Jupiter mass, you know, uh, to make, uh, if we say plausibly, a wormhole black hole, because the gravitational constant is so small. The significance of these terms is they don't have this small term, and in fact, I would say these are scale-free, and it, it's sort of weird, and we've, we've talked about this, so that's why these can be large. So that's the Mach effect stuff. Now, you have in your quick study a summary of Jim's derivation. So you can follow through, and I, I pulled it from Jim's book and you know, pulled it from the dozens of pages where it spread throughout, condensed it down, summarized his assumptions, and every little step is basically correct, but, it, but if you say, step back and say, in general relativity, how would I do this textbook style? That's, I think, what Martin and I tried to do to get this field equation. Uh, so my approach was to start with uh, the linear, and Martin's approach, uh, the linear field equations. And in fact, I will just write it again here since we've seen it yesterday. Okay, equals pi g rho c to the fourth. Actually, whoops, this is a tensor. So, what we, there's a standard in all the relativity textbooks. You linearize uh, the Einstein equations to get the Newtonian limit. You also linearize to get gravitational radiation. So linearization is standard stuff. It's in all the textbooks. Um, and I also you know, wrote down the linear equation. Uh, what I did, though, is... Uh, so I'll just put an L here. What I did is take the linear equation, which looks like this. Uh, I'm sorry. Del squared phi. So we got that piece. That's no problem. C squared, d squared phi, dt squared. I realize I'm writing at a slant. Sorry about that. Equals rho c squared. So this is the linearized field equation, more or less, you know, in broad outline. But it doesn't look like this. And so the trick that Martin and I both said is, what if I just do something sensible with this term and try and convert it? Um, uh, so I put Lance plus Martin here. So we both start from this. So my idea was to say, to eliminate this term, I'm going to use the geodesic equation. And uh, you guys saw that yesterday in my talk. 
And what it does, the geodesic equation has interesting properties. It relates the change in the energy of a body uh, to the change in the energy of the gravitational field, dt phi. So I use this. I, I take the second derivative of this, plug it in here, and I get a Mach effect type equation. Doesn't have the exact same terms as Jim's, but it has the one that he keeps to build all his equipment with. So it seems to correspond where it matters. Doesn't correspond where it doesn't appear to matter. Martin's approach, uh, for his second equation, he said, I'm gonna put, use the Newtonian result, phi equals gm over r, and take time derivatives of that and plug it in, and he's, again, he plugs it in here, and he gets something that has these scale-free Mach effect terms. So I think we all sort of are pretty much convinced, I would say maybe a consensus of this meeting, if it didn't exist before, is that the field equation, the Mach effect field equation with the scale-free stuff is in general relativity, no doubt about it. But the Jim doesn't stop here. He goes on and does engineering. And he makes an assumption about what d rho dt means. And that's what I call Jim's fourth onsatz in his derivation. That's where I think, again, Martin and I, we were talking, we're not quite sure, probably Jim made it this far and got it right, it's, part, it's probably right too, and we're just trying to catch up, but this is where things stand. Um, Simple just, enough? I just want to mention that uh, that's the old way, and now the new way that we have Jose O'Dell helping us is to start with the mass equation, so we have d2 mdt squared and the d mdt all squared, all in one term with a logarithm, and uh, we're actually using that which is directly from the, field, from the equation, and we're not making the assumptions that we did before. So now we have a much, much better force equation, and that's what we're going to use for the future. So What's your second equation, so to speak? It's just, it's just a mass equation, but the mass is that you get directly from that equation. So, so but, instead of density... But this is the field more. equation. You need one more, I think. You need one more. Well, to, I, to, I you need one, one more to, to get... I, got, I derived from the covariate field equation. I said it was... Uh, just like you would here, he says it's rho, and then these are the d rho terms, so you put some all in one lot, rho d rho, and then that's the mass equation. So I'm getting mine directly from the whole uh, uh field equation. It's not in a yeah, there's no Yeah, you get the mass equation really. then, it's no problem, yeah? yeah the mass, mass equation is there, that's all right. Thing. So I think, I think we're starting from the mass equation now. We're not making any assumptions about what the rho is in terms of the voltage or any of that stuff. We're going to Wait, what's the mass, mass equation? It's the one I wrote on the board, it's this. It's this. So the, the delta m over volume is uh, 1 over 4 pi g. So it's like you put all that locked into, into a term like this, and you call that a delta rho, and then this is massive volume. Massive volume is but, equal to 1 over m over yeah. 2 m t squared times the dm dt. But that's just the definition. I'm just wondering, uh, you guys, if you don't use linear field theory? I don't need to. I'm using the full scale covariance form with the polynomial theory with the advanced yeah. space and I get that directly yeah. from the field equation. My, my hypothesis is that the field equation is not enough in relativity. You need one more. Well, I don't need anything more in mind. In yeah. The polynomial, there's nothing more to add. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. That's it's sort of an approximation to it. The polynomial thing gives it to you exactly with no approximations in, in full covariant form. So, is that a good spot to leave it, Jim? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, I agree. It's complete.